everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting Cyrene's Razors. Yes, the Ideneth Deepkin finally make their debut on the channel. A lot of you have been waiting for this and for good reason because these are absolutely spectacular models. They're wonderful. It's a lovely little range from Games Workshop and these have come to me early as part of the Death Gorge Warhammer Underworlds set. Games Workshop very kindly sent me uh, to build up and paint for all of you. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. So we are going to jump in and we're going to start doing them. Now, firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to work on these three and then we'll work on the octopus squid thing uh, afterwards. So we'll get these three done and then we'll do this one because these three have quite a few details in common. Now, the first of these details is going to be that lovely blue. And this is what you kind of see on all of their kind of heraldic cloth, as it were. So this is going to be areas such as inside here, underneath the armour. This is going to be the outside of this cloak, for example. It's also going to include the kind of dresses and cloaks and things on our Namati thralls. I think that's what they are. Anyway, uh, they've been primed in white scar. And the colour we're going to be using first is Frost Heart. And we're going to be applying this all over all of those details. And we're going to start over on this side. And we're going to make our way across the rest of the cloak. So we're just going to start applying this. Just like this, using these nice big broad brush strokes and just gliding across the surface of the miniature in order to get a nice smooth coat. With that frost heart all applied, we're then going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and talisar blue. And we're going to go over the top in exactly the same way. So with the back of the cloak done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Pilar Glacier. I'm going to use this to paint the inside of the cloak. So with that done, we've got this lovely subtle blue going on on the inside of the cloak. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Corax White, which is a little bit darker than White Scar. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this to now paint in, as you can see, slightly darker. I'm going to use this to now correct and paint in 
any trim bits on all the cloak. So with that Corax white all applied, we now need another subtle color tone, and that's exactly what we're gonna get with some Corelia green shade. And we're gonna apply this over the top of it. And so with that all done, we're now gonna shade it just to get it out of the way. And the color we're gonna be using to do this is Tyran Blue. I'm gonna do this over the top of both the trim and the body of all the blue. So that all done across all three of our models. Like that, it's still drying at the moment, but that is okay because what we're going to do now is move on. I'm gonna move on to all of the black details. So the color we're gonna be using for this is some Black Legion. And we're gonna be applying this over the trousers on all of our models, as well as the haft of their weapons and starves and things. So with that all done, whilst it might be a little bit early in the process, what we are going to do is we're going to take some thinned down rune fang steel. I'm going to apply this over top of all of our silver armor. We're not going over the top of any blades or anything like that. We are going over the top of all of the armor plates. And it's gonna take two thin coats because you can see it's quite bright. You want to ensure that you get a nice covering of this. over the top. So with that rune fang steel that all applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use two shades, Corelia Green Shade and Tyran Blue. And we're gonna use these at the same time over the top of all of that silver. So we're gonna take the Corelia Green Shade first. And we're gonna apply this over the top of some of the armor panels. So we apply this like this. Like that over those lower waist ones. Then we're gonna wash the brush. And then we're going to grab Tyran Blue. And we're going to add this. Over the top. Wash the brush. Then 
I'm going to grab Tyrion Blue once again. I'm going to apply this over the top of the next set of arm panels. It's going to be these ones. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. Grab some Coelia green shade this time. And we're going to add this on as well. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in the boots. And with that Saigor Brown applied, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this to the tassels. They've all got at least one. And so with that done, we're then going to use Gilliman Flesh just on Cyrene, not on the other two. I'm going to apply this over the top of her face. And arms. And with that Gilliman flesh applied on Cyrene again once and just on her, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of the headdress and the shell at the top of the staff. So with that Seraphim Sepia applied, whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Mortarian Grime and we're going to apply this over the top of the flesh on our other two. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully take a small amount of Blood Angels Red and we're going to run this in the room. On the foreheads. Just 
just like that. So with that then done, we're then gonna once again take some Pilar Glacier. I'm gonna apply this over the top of Cyrene's face shawl thing. Veil. Is it a veil? Kind of looks like a veil. And with that done, we are now going to apply our final base coat on Cyrene. And that is going to be some thinned down Retributor armor. And we're going to apply this over all of the remaining details on Cyrene. So we're going to be applying this over the kind of areas on the staff that we haven't done, and like the decorative bits. Like this. We're going to be applying this over the top of any jewellery she's wearing. And we're also going to apply this over kind of tassely bit just here as well as any gems like this one here in the middle of the tummy and this one up here although we are going to apply this over the top of that entire device just like that sort of thing Whereas on our other two, it's much the same. We're gonna be looking for jewelry and things. And also we're gonna be applying this over the top of the decorative elements on the weapons. So basically everywhere that we haven't done already, but excluding the blade. So we're gonna be doing all of this bit. And so with that done, what we're then going to do, because all of our base coats are on now over here, is we're going to finish applying our base coats by taking some thinned down lead belcher and applying this over the top of the blades and the lantern on our, our other individual. So with that all done, we've got all of our base coats on across all three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shades. And the first of these is going to be some Fuegan Orange. And we're going to be using this to do a couple of things, but mostly we're going to use this to shade all the gold. So we're going to do this over the top of the star, for example, like that sort of thing. But on Cyrene, what we're going to do, we're also going to use this to shade the headdress over the top of the Seraphim Sapphire. Like that. And we're not going to do this over the shell. The shell is perfect. And with that done, we're then going to take some Null Oil and we're going to use this to shade the black and the lead belcher. For example, there's some of the black. Like that. And there's the lead belcher. So with that done, these three are now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and they're already looking pretty cool. However, you may notice that the one in the middle is a little bit shinier, and that is because I've gone one step further, but the previous take corrupted, so we're starting again. Now, what we are gonna be doing is taking them to the next level, and we're gonna be doing this by adding some highlights. And the first of these is going to once again be Rune Fang Steel. This is just such a lovely, simple silver recipe. All we're gonna do here is we're simply Going to take the Rune Fang Steel 
And we're going to pick out all the edges. We're also basically going to re-layer this over any kind of really wide open areas. Because we want this to just be really, really bright with hints of blue in there. We're just going to be doing this on the silver armor. We're going to be doing the blades and other bits of silver slightly differently. So don't worry about them for now. And just make your way around all the armor with your rune fang steel. So with that done, all of the silver is now finished for the armor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Temple Guard blue. I'm going to use this to highlight any of our blue uh, kind of cloaky bits. So I'm actually going to start at this end. This is going to be quite a subtle highlight, but it's going to introduce a little bit more of that kind of sea, sea green kind of vibe that we're after. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Baharoth blue. I'm gonna use this to add a little bit of spot highlighting to all of that blue. So we're just going to add a really narrow little line. Coming down the middle. Of our Temple Guard blue ones. So with that all done, the dark blue, well, mid blue, is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down white scar. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the white. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thins down rust grey. I'm going to use this to highlight the black details. So with that all done, it's back to the cloak, because what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight all of the trim using some thinned down grey sear. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down iron hands steel and we're going to use this to relayer the cutting edge of our blades. And with that iron hand steel applied, we're then going to take some thin down iron breaker and we're going to use this to highlight all of those alternative silver details. This is going to include the lamp on this fella.
So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Liberator Gold. We're going to use this to highlight all the gold. And with that Liberator Gold all applied, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this over the top of the gems. And with that Blood Angels Red applied, we're then going to take some Thin Down Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight the skin on our two Mortarian Grime individuals. So not on Cyrene. With that done, these two are finished. So I'm going to pop them to one side and we're going to take some thinned down flayed one flesh. We're going to use this to highlight Cyrene's skin. And with that flayed one flesh applied, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over Cyrene's eyes. And so with that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take a small amount of Screaming Skull. I'm going to apply this as a little dot. In each corner of the eyes. So with that all done, these three are now finished. So we can pop them to one side and we're now going to work on Sephanir, I think is the name. This guy is what we're going to do now. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to do because he's a little bit weird and quite an organic shape of course and there's a lot of different colours going on here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start by taking some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of, firstly, the entirety of the shell up here. just like that and then we're also going to bring it over the top of the eyebrows around underneath like this then we can't forget about these little corners like that one thing I've clearly forgotten to do is to do the back of the shell So we're just going to quickly do that. <laughs> like that. Can get this all over this eyebrow as well. 
bring it around. Like that. So, that's part one. Now what we need to do is we need to come down each of the tentacles and do a little bit of blending out into the white. So we're gonna start here on the front. I'm gonna bring it as far down as there. And what we don't want to do is go on the inside of the tentacle. So we just wanna to stay towards the outside. So we get to around about there. We then wash the brush. And then we just very gently Blend it out just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this one. Get to around about two thirds. Wash the brush. And then feather away until it blends out into the white. Same again. Like that, wash the brush. And then blend it out. Like that. So we're obviously gonna recreate this across all of those tentacles. But what we have as a slightly different thing is on the big ones, so this one here and this one here, we actually do need to go from the bottom and from the top. So we're going to start down here, get this all over, like this, bring it up to around about there, like that, wash the brush, and then blend it together by feathering away, like so. And we also need to do the inside of those tentacles as well. So we're going to bring it down like this. Wash the brush. And then do a little bit of blending. like that, but from the top, we're also going to apply this like that, wash the brush, and then blend in the opposite direction. So you should have seraphim sepia into blended white into seraphim sepia once again. You need to do this on this one and on this one, whereas finally, for our rear tentacles, this one here, for example, we just want to go over the outside. Like that. Like so. So with that seraphim sepia all applied thusly, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Caraberg Crimson and Reitland Flesh Shade. We're basically going to go over the top of most of it. The only things we're not going to be really doing are the front here of the face. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start around here and we're going to apply this. like this, a little bit too much on my brush there. And bring it up here, like so. Bring it along here. 
here. And then over the top of the head, you've got this kind of bulbous section like that, that kind of acts as our guide for where we want to apply this paint. And then what we want to do is we want to wash the brush. And around that area, we want to blend it together by feathering away that transition line. Just like that sort of thing. And then we're going to use this to go over all of our blends, but we're also just going to avoid all the places that we've already done. So all of that white, for example. But one thing we definitely want to do with this is we want to use this to now paint in the underbelly. will then make for a really nice color transition on our rear tentacles. So with that then done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one to one to one, or rather one to one to one mix of contrast medium, flesh terrors red, and shayish purple. And we're going to be applying this over four different details. So firstly, we're going to apply this over the top of the tentacles. Down here. It's just going to be over these kind of solidy bits. Like this, coming down to that one. Like that. And then we can take it up the tentacle just a little bit. Like that. Wash the brush. And then. Give it a little blend once again. Like so. We're also going to apply this mix over the top of the eyebrows. that sort of thing and then the kind of trickiest bit is we're going to apply this over the top of this kind of section here I'm going to move quite quickly here because then what we want to do is wash the brush and then to blend it again. Just 
just like that sort of thing. We then need to do the inside of the shell. But that's a little bit easier. We can just do that. Wash the brush, and then we can blend it into the soft underbelly. Just like that. And then another thing we can do, just for fun, and add a little bit of this to the swirl on the head. Like so. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're gonna use this as a little recess shade along the tentacles specifically in the white areas. So we're gonna bring it down like that. And then you see the segments here. So with that all done, we are then going to take some Eandon Yellow and we're going to apply this over the top of the eyes. And so with that done, we then want to take a really small amount of Black Legion and we want to apply this inside the triangle that you can see in both the eyes. So with that done, we are now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and we're looking pretty cool. However, we're not going to leave it there, of course not. We're going to add some highlights, and the first of these is going to be some flayed one flesh, and we're going to use this as a dry brush. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush this over the top of all of our darker fleshy areas. So for example, around here on these tentacles, like this, and we are going to bring this down over the top of the areas where we did our flesh tear is red. And shadish purple mix. Just like that sort of thing. However, what we're also going to do is over the top of the head, so we're going to dry brush this in a circular motion so we get a nice smooth covering. All over, just like this, and we're going to bring this down as well over the top of 
these flesh tear as ready bits as well. So with that flayed one flesh dry brush applied, we're then gonna do another dry brush of some pallid witch flesh. And we're gonna keep this towards most of the white, but we are going to very gently catch this over the top of our flayed one fleshy areas, our slightly darker areas like this. And then when it gets to the really dark areas, you just wanna catch the tips. So with that done, all four of Cyrene's razors are now finished, except for, of course, the bases. No, the fun doesn't stop there. So what we're going to do is we're going to now paint those bases, and it's not actually as difficult as it looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Black Templar, and we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the kind of seabed slash sand. So with that Black Templar all applied, we're then gonna take some Rattling Grime and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of the rocks. With that rattling grime all applied, we're then going to take some flesh tear as red. I'm going to apply this over the top of the starfish. Like that. And with that done, we're then going to take some Nasdrag yellow. I'm going to apply this over the top of the crab. That Nasdrag yellow applied, we're then going to take some Briar Queen Chill. I'm going to apply this over the top of the jellyfish. So with that then done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Frost Heart and we're going to use this to add just a little bit more of a punch of colour here. So we're going to add this along the little dots. Like that sort of thing. And then what we're also going to do is on the top of this one just here, 
going to take a small amount of the frost tart. I'm going to apply this like this in a circle. Around the top of the jellyfish. And then I'm going to wash the brush. And then we're going to blend it out just a little bit. like so, whereas on the other one, on the little jellyfish, what we're going to do is we're going to take the frost tart, we're going to apply it all over the top of the kind of top bit, like this. And then we're going to wash the brush. And then around the tip, we're actually going to essentially feather it away. Just like that sort of thing. And so with that then done, we're going to take Drakenhof Nightshade and we're going to use this over the top of this darker bit here. Or rather what will be a darker bit. Like that. We're also going to add this around the top of our large jellyfish, like that. Wash the brush, and then just very gently and carefully, I'm gonna use this to move it around the top. I'm gonna use a Drakenhof nightshade around the base of our small Jellyfish. Like so. And we're going to apply this going up our tentacles. Like so. I'm going to wash the brush and then I'm just going to blend those colours into the Briar Queen Chill. that Drakenhof nightshade applied we're then going to take some Nasdrag yellow and we're going to apply this over the eyes just down here on our large jellyfish And with that now done, we're then going to take some Leviathan Blue. And we're going to apply this over the tips of the tentacles. So we're going to bring it around like that. We're then going to wash the brush. And then To blend it out like that. We're also going to use this to add a 
add a little bit of depth to the bottom part of this jellyfish just here. Like that. And then we're also going to add a small amount of this to the tip, wash the brush, and then once again just move that paint around a little bit more just add it in there like that And with that done, we're now just going to highlight our jellyfish using some thinned down white scar. So we're going to be looking for the lines here on the tentacles. I want to bring it all the way down into the blue. like that sort of thing. Similarly, we're going to add this as a little dot along all of those little blue bits. I'm going to use this to highlight the dark area. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to finish things off by taking some Tyrant Skull. I'm going to do a very gentle dry brush of this over the top of the base. is to paint in the rim in the colour of your choice. And so with the bases now complete, Cyrene's razors are finished and thus marks the entry of the Ideneth Deepkin to the channel. I know it's been a long time coming and a bunch of you have been asking for this, but we finally got there in the end day eh? with an absolutely beautiful little unit, part of the Underworld's Death Gorge set. And they just always make the best miniatures in Underworlds, don't they? If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.